Well, hey guys, happy July 1st. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my monthly favorites and some fails that we had in terms of skincare. I also will share with you some lifestyle favorites as well, like I always do. I do these videos obviously monthly, but if you are new here, I have them all saved in a playlist. Um, I'll link some of my previous ones in the description box if you want to watch those. I had the opportunity for work to go on a trip to Austin and I stayed at a fun hotel. You guys went along with me in my vlogs. If you missed those, definitely check them out. We had a good time. In that vlog, I decided to try the Clinique Take the Day Off cleansing wipes. And I've always told you all and you know pointed this out that I personally just don't find wipes to be effective, but a lot of people like to use them to begin to break up their makeup, and they find them especially convenient for travel purposes. A lot of people like using them when they go camping. Somebody is buying them. Everybody and their mother has a cleansing wipe. McDonald's is gonna have a cleansing wipe. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Anyways, the Clinique Take the Day Off cleansing wipes were horrible, like worse than regular cleansing wipes. I love the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm, so I was kind of hoping that these wipes would be that product in a soft, you know, tissue or whatever. No, very, I would say abrasive, but it really made my skin sting and it actually made my cheeks very red. I don't know if you remember that from the vlog clip when I was using it. It really was not good at all. Um, so I don't suggest those if you're somebody who likes to have wipes when you travel or whatever, they are not good. And I'm sure they're expensive too. This was a sample packet, but definitely not something I would buy. But I do like the Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. It is quite good. So another fail this month has been this Drunk Elephant Wonder Wild Miracle Butter. Do not, do not spend your money on this. It is not worth it. There are a lot of Drunk Elephant products that are quite good, like I enjoy them. The Proteiny Polypeptide Cream, I've always liked. The Lippy Balm, I love. Um, and I had high hopes for this. It has marula seed oil in it, as do all of Drunk Elephant's products. When this brand first came out, they made marula seed oil out to seem like a winning lotto ticket, and people were just eating that up, and now everybody's forgotten about marula seed oil, but they, you know, it's still like their signature thing. It builds itself as a miracle butter. I was thinking it was gonna be more of a rich, maybe even almost ointment type consistency. It's really just like very emollient and does not do a very good job moisturizing. It temporarily maybe softens the skin a bit, but even that, it just kind of goes on and it almost feels dry and greasy at the same time, if that's even possible. Uh, and you need a good amount of product to get adequate spread onto the skin. So you go through this very quickly and you don't get much in return. So thinking it might be a good product to use as a, an intensive hand balm when you get dry hands from frequent hand washing, it is not. I do not recommend this, it was a fail. All right, this is a double fail. Um, so this is a brand I've never heard of, but you know how Amazon is always suggesting stuff to you when you go on there and it gets tempting. I saw this Julep Beauty No Excuses SPF 40 sunscreen, and I was like, hmm, never heard of that before. Fragrance-free SPF 40 sunscreen gel. I was like, I need to try this out for the channel because it's a sunscreen gel and that might be a good option for hair bearing areas, like for people who have facial hair might like that. And as you can see me putting on my hand here, it is a really nice gel. Um, and on putting it on, I was like, this seems like it's gonna be really good. Except about 10 minutes later, it like completely peeled up off my face. And I retried it several times making sure, like I tried washing my face and pat drying it before applying it. I tried a few different techniques basically to see if I could get it to work. Long story short, it peels up off the skin, not even peeling, which is like we're talking sheets of it coming up. But that is, that is nothing in comparison to what I saw a few weeks later on Instagram from this brand. It's weird. It, all of a sudden I got an ad from this brand on Instagram, it, probably because Instagram has a chip in my head and is following me around everywhere along with Amazon. They're in cahoots 
and they communicate and they're like, let's show her this ad. Oh my God. We are participating in a toast test Thursday using our Julep No Excuses Invisible Sunscreen Gel with SPF 40. With this incredible sunscreen, we put it on only half the toast to put this to the ultimate test. We have put in the toaster oven to test and it worked. As you can see the half that we put it on is not burned. Shop our No Excuses sunscreen on Amazon.com. And the half of the bread that they didn't put this on got toasted in the toaster oven, whereas the other half where they did put this on did not get toasted. And they were trying to make it seem as though, see, our sunscreen is effective at protecting you from a burn from the sun. It's like, no, that is not how a sunburn works. A toaster oven does not, unless people are putting their bread in a tanning bed, um, there aren't UV rays in a, in a toaster oven. The goal of sunscreen is to protect you from UV rays. So the burn that you get from sun is not from heat, it's from ultraviolet radiation, which sunscreen compounds like avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylone, which is what is in this, should protect you from. I mean, it was just an incredibly goofy, Ill, like, wrong ad and I don't know like hopefully maybe they took it down but they left it up for a good while and the comments on that were actually quite hilarious people leaving comments like um hello yeah so that was a fail um in a performance from a performance perspective and from an advertising perspective that was an ad fail all right so those were the fails sunscreen winning i you know mentioned this ad nauseum how i've been really into going to the pool a lot you guys see that in my vlogs um i've really been living up the pool life and this bondi sands spf 50 fragrance free sunscreen lotion i discovered this last year and this year i'm using it even more last year i remember finding it very moisturizing and liking how it looked like on my legs it gives the skin a very nice like glow it doesn't even look like you put sunscreen on it looks like you put on some kind of glamorous lotion you're all glowy and it keeps the skin like it says hydrated it says 72 hour hydration free of fragrance now if you put it on the face looks great you might get a, i get sometimes a little bit of the burny blurry eyes with this on the face they make a product for the face but it's basically the same thing so i didn't find that that product was any different from this yeah i've been using this a lot more to go out by the pool it doesn't it doesn't feel sticky like stuff doesn't stick to you after you put it on it absorbs pretty quickly and it's moisturizing and it's pretty good value too. And a lot of you guys have commented that you're really liking it. Water resistant, so it's perfect for being outside. It's perfect for the sweaty, humid climate. Really good body sunscreen. So I've been relying on that a fair amount. I've also really been enjoying Eucerin chemical sunscreen. That one is especially good for the pool because it's very, um, it's a lot more moisturizing, and not more moisturizing, but it's more, it's got more of a skin protectant aspect to it. It's a little bit more uh, shiny, if you will, as opposed to that. That absorbs more into the skin. That one, the Eucerin one, is good if you're gonna get in the pool. I explain all this in my sunscreens for the body video, so definitely check that one out if you missed it. But this is something I bought last year, and I've been using it a lot more for the pool. And this is a hat that um, is by San Diego Hat Company. And I like it because it's got the Velcro in the back, so you can Velcro it. You can have your hair in the top. So what I do, this is perfect for swimming in the pool if you're like me and you don't you know, wanna go get your hair wet and you don't go under the water because you can put your hair like in a ponytail or a bun and then put this on and it doesn't mess up your hair. And the bun adequately, for me, I have quite a bit of hair, it covers my scalp. So I like that, you know, I've got all that hair sitting on top of my scalp. Um, and then I've got this protecting my face. And I also have my UPF swimwear that I bought. A swimsuit I've really been loving is by Body Glove. Kind of a peachy color. It's very comfortable, pretty inexpensive. Bathing suits are so expensive. You definitely get what you pay for. I have purchased cheap bathing suits before and it's like they are always sat they're always saggy in the butt 
or they don't fit properly in the top. They're the, the kind of thing where you would not want to go run and jump into the pool. You may lose your top. Um, I used to buy a lot of uh, inexpensive bathing suits at Target and at the time I didn't think they were that inexpensive but they were more in my budget. Those would typically last me like a summer and a half um, and I haven't bought a bathing suit from Target in a while but yeah bathing suits are really really expensive. So I mentioned I don't get my hair wet, I don't go under the water when I swim. I'm a terrible swimmer like I sink really like it's just as much as I love running and working out, you would think that I would have some endurance for swimming. And I don't know what it is. No matter how much I practice swimming, I just get like completely out of breath. I'm just not, somehow I'm not doing it efficiently, basically, because I do like one lap across the pool and I am like, <sighs> and I don't get it because I can run long distances, not even, you know, it takes a while for me, for my heart rate to get up. So I don't know what my deal is with the pool, but I purchased these on the Amazonian. I have one here, the pink one. I also have a blue one. They're little kickboards. And so these are really great because they allow me basically to swim in the pool without flopping around like a jellyfish. And I am able to do laps without, you know, getting too exhausted. And it's a good workout, I will say. So if you're looking for a low impact uh, form of exercise and you have access to a pool, and you're like me, you're not the most efficient swimmer, get one of these. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. I think they're, they're, they'd also be good for children too. I think they're meant for like adults and kids, I think it says on the website. A book that I finished um, and I wanted to update you guys on is called Grocery, The Buying and Selling of Food in America by Michael Rollman. It was about basically the history of the American grocery store and it started out really good, but it was a little weak as far as the whole book went. It, it's a nonfiction book um, about you know the history of the grocery store. He gets into like how you know, people started wanting to buy organic this and organic that, or certain types of like, you know, quote, healthier foods started being offered in grocery stores. And he interviews a lot of people and presents that information as though it's factual. So a lot of it is very anecdotal, which I didn't like because there were some things in there where I, I didn't feel as though he was giving very representative information and I often question if he was like kind of spinning some sort of narrative in certain parts. Um, nonetheless, it was kind of an interesting read because he grew up with a father who was like really into grocery stores and I really enjoyed the part where in the beginning especially where he would go in and interview different people who had you know, started a grocery store and built it up into like a chain. I thought that was really interesting, kind of like the old school um, grocer, like a local general store type things. I liked hearing about that. But then once he got into more of the like organic food kind of stuff, I, he sort of lost me. So not the best book, but it was definitely an enjoyable read and I finished that up. Didn't watch much in the way of movies. I didn't want, I don't think I watched any movies this past month. I've just been like enjoying the pool, as I said. Speaking of pool, I did really enjoy my Austin trip. That was definitely a highlight from the month. Had a great time there. I stayed at the Austin Proper Hotel. I went there for a work event. The restaurant that I ate at in the hotel was very good. And one thing I found very odd, awkward, and potentially troublesome for people is that when you get in the elevator, you know, it's so cool to be all dark all the time. The elevator was like really dark and you couldn't necessarily see the buttons particularly well on the panel where the buttons are. They had the floors marked where the gym was and the pool was. It just said pool and gym. But you, it was really hard to read because it was so dark in there. So if somebody had, you know, was visually impaired, very challenging. Last but not least, an item that I got towards the end of the month, which I have been loving. Um, I've been eyeing it for a while and I finally got it. It is this electric kettle by Kasari. It's black and it has a gooseneck spout. But what I love the most about it is it has a few different temperatures that you can have the water heat up to. Boiling, coffee setting, and then they have a few different settings for different types of tea. Because I'm always, you know, I boil water for green tea, but technically you're not supposed to have it boiling. So I really like this. You can get it just to the right temperature. But what I love the most is that it has a hold feature where it will hold it for you at that temperature 
while you get your act together, which I really need. So that I've been really happy with. Highly recommend it if you were in the market for an electric kettle, no whistling or anything like that. And it's all black, it's not see-through. So I find that the clear ones, at least here with the hard water, they start to get cloudy looking. All right, y'all, that was everything from the month of June that I loved. Uh, happy 4th of July weekend when you're watching this. Go up on the 1st, 4th of July is on a Monday, so probably a long holiday weekend for many of you. I hope you have a good time. If you're outside of the US, uh, I hope you have a great weekend. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.